Welcome to Excursions on Rails, a screencast in support of our recently released book, Learning Rails. Today's excursion takes a look at Heroku, heroku.com, which is a web-based environment for building Rails applications. It doesn't have to be uh, web-based if you want to build your application and then move it out here, um, but a lot of the fun around it is that it's built on Amazon Web Services, specifically their EC2 service. Uh, so in a sense, you're taking your application and you're putting it out in the clouds on the internet for anybody to get to. To get started, you're going to want to go up to the login up here in the top right corner. Make this a little bit larger. If you don't have a login, which you won't have the first time out, don't worry. You can go down to the sign up link. And here they say that the average wait is less than a day. So just enter your email address, click the sign up button and wait for an email to let you in. Uh, in my experience, they have lived up to the less than a day option. Um, I do have an account set up, so I'll log in with that. And we have a blank My Apps console. To get started, we're going to want to click on Create New App. And as you'll see, it creates an application and actually dumps you into it. Um, this is a little bit different than the usual Rails opening page. Uh, it has a little more information specific to Heroku. Uh, there's a link to the editor for your application. Uh, there's a way to import an application if you've already created one elsewhere. Um, they note the work locally option, which is worth knowing about, but we're not actually going to use for this screencast. And perhaps most importantly is your way back to the regular Heroku interface. Down at the bottom here is this rewind button. And if you click on the Rewind button, you come to the editor. Now Heroku just skipped a few steps for you. Uh, it created the application, which is the same as running Rails in the name of your application. Um, so we already have all of the little folders generated by Rails, uh, exactly as they would be, just uh, presented here uh, in the web interface. If you're wondering what name Heroku gave your application, you can find it in the top left. That's not a very exciting one, so let's change it to something a little bit more appealing. We'll call it Guestbook 001. For now, it can be a private application, so only people who uh, are actually involved in your project can log into it. You can set it for public. Um, I'm a collaborator. I have full edit access. You can add other people to it. Um, they have other options here for uh, uh, domain names, um, and you can set things for production or development. Uh, for right now, I would strongly recommend leaving everything here the same. Um, these are your settings. You can also import and export your application if you want to put code into Heroku or get rid of it. Uh, there are snapshots if you want to keep track of where your application was at various different times. And other lets you do a variety of things, uh, lets you check on the usage, uh, lets you get some extra privileges, and perhaps most importantly, lets you destroy your application. Uh, we won't actually destroy the application right now, um, but we will give it that nicer name. So, guestbook001, we'll rename it. It gives you a nice notification that things happened, and then you can click Edit to return to the editor. Now that we're back in the editor, you can take a look around under the app folder. You'll find the same uh, same files that you would normally have in a Rails application. As you can see, the editor has some nice color highlighting and some other other good features. Um, to build your application, though, you need to tell Rails a few things to do. And if you look down here at the gear menu, you'll find that you can bring up the generate menu, which is the key piece you need to get started. So in this case, we're going to follow the model of uh, chapter two um, of learning Rails. You don't need to write script generate. You just write controller hello index and click run. And sure enough, we will see in just a moment um, that it created a number of files for us and it even brings up the controller because in a normal uh, Rails development environment that would be the first thing you wanted to modify. For our own purposes, following along with chapter 2, we're just going to go to the hello view and we're going to change the index.html.erb file um, to something that's just slightly more exciting. So here we can see the default that we'll get if we run the application. 
Um, just to see it, uh, we'll get the same thing that's in figure 2.1. We'll hit this fast forward button. That brings us to the front page. To get to the page we just generated, we'll just add hello to the extension. And there we go. We have our uh, not very exciting, admittedly, um, application running. Down here, we'll hit the rewind button to go back to the editor. And we're going to want to modify the index.html.erb file from views, which is right here. So in this case, we're going to go and grab the code from example 2.2 of Learning Rails, which I have right here. It's just an HTML document. We aren't actually running any Ruby code at this point. But what we're going to want to do is paste it in in place of what was there. We're going to want to save it. And then we'll hit the fast forward button again. And as you can see, it's changed. It says hello. This is a greeting from AppView's hello index.html.erb, just like figure 2.2 in Learning Rails. Now you're probably saying that was really boring. I don't need Rails to set up HTML pages. And you're right. If we go back to the editor, we'll take a look at another piece of our application under App Controllers Hello Controller. This is where the actual logic of our application goes. And in this case, we're just going to add some fairly basic uh, variable assignments. Uh, this is the uh, code from example 2.4 of Learning Rails. And we'll take a look at it here. It's just a class that contains one method called index. Uh, like HTML, index.html is the default, and Rails index is the default. And it defines three variables. Uh, they're all instance variables. They'll be accessible to the uh, view when we get there. There's at message, at count, and at bonus. Um, they have simple values. Uh, for right now, we're just going to basically display the strings. So we need to save this. Then to actually do something with that, we're going to go back to our view and we'll make it slightly less dull. And we'll do this by grabbing the code from example 2.5 of Learning Rails, which is here. And you can download all of that code from the, uh, the support page for Learning Rails or Excursions on Rails. Um, as you can see, we have something different here. Now this is called an ERB file. And it's somewhat similar to our older HTML, except for all of these percent, uh, less than percent equal things, which in this case are just displaying the value of a variable. So if you have less than percent, it's for Ruby logic. If it's less than percent equals, it means display the contents of whatever's here. So it means that the message, which was, if you look back here, we'll save our changes, is hello, uh, will get displayed here and here. And then we have the same greeting, OK, whatever. And then the value of the bonus variable, which was set to this message came from the controller, will get used in this bottom line of the document. So it's all saved. And we'll go to hit the fast forward button to actually do something. And as you can see, we now have our greeting up in the headline and in the title. And the this message from the controller, our bonus message, actually appeared. Now, I know this isn't a very exciting application, and that's all right. It's just to get you started. Uh, but to show off Heroku just a little bit more, I think it's worth doing uh, another application. So we'll go back. If you click on your email address down at the bottom right, it'll take you back to your applications page. And I'm going to create a new application, which I'm going to use to demonstrate uh, material from Chapter 5 in Learning Rails. And I'm not going to worry right now about changing the name of it, but I do need to issue a script generate command, which you'll actually find on page 60 of Learning Rails. Um, again, you don't have to write script generate. You just have to say what you actually want to generate when you've selected generate from the gear menu. So here we're creating a scaffold. Uh, it will be for a uh, model named person, which has a name of type string. And we'll click on Run. We'll wait for Heroku to do a little bit of generating. And after some minor warnings about regular expression patterns, you can see all the usual notes about generation that came from, the, uh, from running that. 
Now, to actually make this work, you can see at the bottom here, database has unapplied migrations, migrate now. One of my biggest frustrations when I'm creating Rails applications is that I forget to apply migrations when they've been generated. Um, you can actually see the migration on the screen here. So we'll hit migrate now, and Rails will run off and take care of some database issues for us. So it's creating a table named people, which contains strings named name. Uh, if I ever want to get rid of that, the self down method will take care of that with the drop table method. After a little wait, you'll see the migration results, which basically mean they created a table um, and it ran. You can hit the escape button up in the top right to make that go away. And right now it's worth taking a look at another tab in Heroku, this data tab here, which we haven't actually explored. Uh, contains all of the information for your databases. So here we have the people database with zero records. You can see that it has a name string and it has some created and updated uh, uh, values as well. We'll go back to our code now and we'll actually run this. And we need to change this so that it's people. And as you can see here, there aren't any people. So let's go ahead and let's create a new person. We'll use my usual strange uh, Z names pattern and we'll create a person. And the Rails scaffolding gives us a report that the person was successfully created. If we hit back to go to the main listing, we'll see Zimpton here. We have show, edit, and destroy methods. Uh, we'll create one more person just to uh, complete the cycle. The person is created. We can edit them. Uh, we can show them. If we hit back, we can see a full list. And at this point, let's go back and see what actually happened in that database. So if you go to the data section, you can see people. That's the schema. If you hit data, you'll see that we have Zimpton created now, updated now. And you can actually make changes here if you want to. Uh, you can also import comma separated value files if you need to get new data in that you don't want to spend the time to import you know, manually through the, through the interface. So um, we didn't actually write any code. Uh, this is an example of Rails uh, RESTful code generation and Heroku coming through and taking care of all of the database setup for you. It's very simple. It's very clean. It's a very quick way to get started. Um, and as you'll see in Learning Rails, there's an awful lot more that you can do with this.